Hello and welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Our guest is Dr. Lauren Stryker, and she's joining us on the program today to talk about some of the the myths, the misconceptions, and some of the common questions surrounding hormone and estrogen therapy. Thank you for joining us on the program today, Doctor. Hi, Neil. Thank you for having me. Well, uh, you are all uh, all over the place. You're on so many shows, Dr. Oz, uh, the Steve Harvey Show, WGN. Uh, give us a bit of background about yourself, and, and let's talk about women's health. Well, I'm an academic gynecologist, but my real passion is educating women because I find that this is information that they often don't get, whether they go to their doctor or not. So that's why I spend a lot of time writing, talking to people like you, really trying to give women good information, because I know if they have good information, they will make really good choices for themselves. Now, there was a, a Women's Health Initiative report that came out. Let's talk about some of the changes in, and, um, I guess, ideology when it comes to estrogen therapy, hormone therapy, since that report came out. Well, the Women's Health Initiative, uh, which was actually back in, in, in 2002, the purpose of it was to study the effect of, of hormone therapy in terms of what medical conditions it might influence, things like heart disease, cancer, stroke, dementia. And now as we look back on it, we realize that there was a very big difference between the groups that took estrogen alone, the groups that took estrogen with progestin, the age of the women. And that's why it's so important that instead of having this idea that all the information was bad or that hormone therapy is dangerous, women really need to understand the specifics of the study. And they can actually read it themselves. If you go to whi.org, and you can look at the specifics of the study and see the difference between these groups, the estrogen alone, oral estrogen, estrogen versus progestin. There are a lot of specifics that really influence the outcome. How can, uh, how can a woman pinpoint what is best for her? Well, at the end of the day, a woman needs to talk to a healthcare professional. And not mm -hmm. every healthcare professional is going to be a menopause expert. And I'm always telling women and emphasizing, if you go to your doctor, nurse practitioner, whoever you go to for your medical advice, and if they don't seem like this is a comfortable topic for them, or if they don't seem knowledgeable, there are people that are knowledgeable. One of the websites that I highly recommend is the website for the North American Menopause Society, menopause.org. And that's one of those sites where you can put a zip code in, and they will find menopause experts in your area because there are people out there who can help, but it's like anything else in medicine. You need to know who to go to, who's going to give you the right information. Now, just like any other uh, situation as far as health is, is concerned, there are lots of uh, subtle nuances depending on, on the person. Uh, when it comes to going through menopause, if, you, if you're going through symptoms say, earlier than you think you should be or later than you think you should be? Is that something that, you know, you need to be talking about well, immediately? People ask me all the time, when do I start talking about menopause with my patients? And even though the average menopause age in the United States is 51, any time after mm -hmm. 40 is considered to be normal. So that's an appropriate uh -huh. time to just start having the conversation and say, you might have these symptoms that might be bothersome to you. And if you do have these symptoms, we have solutions we can offer. And I think what a lot of people don't really appreciate is that 80% of women will experience hot flashes. And those hot flashes on average can last from seven to 12 years. And my typical patient says, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna tough this out because I have a healthy mm -hmm. lifestyle. I eat right, I do yoga, I do all of that. And then they're just kind of blindsided when they find that that doesn't alleviate the hot flashes. And what we now appreciate is that all those healthy lifestyle changes, while they're good for your health in general, it's not going to get rid of hot flashes. What does get rid of hot flashes is hormone therapy. Hormone therapy is absolutely the most effective way to reduce or eliminate hot flashes. Aren't some of the same compounds uh, used in hormone therapy for menopause found in birth control pills? Does that make it a problem or is it a good thing? No, it's actually a good thing. And I'm, and I'm glad you brought that up because women are very comfortable taking birth control pills. And birth control pills actually have a relatively high dose of estrogen for the purposes of suppressing the ovaries, suppressing ovulation, and preventing pregnancy. Hormone therapy, on the other hand, which is also a combination of estrogen and in most cases of progestin, is very low-dose hormone therapy for the purpose of alleviating symptoms. 
And in fact, if you do a hormone level, a blood hormone level of a woman who's taking postmenopause hormone therapy, her mm -hmm. estrogen level is actually going to be much, much lower than certainly if she were taking birth control pills and even lower than her level would be before she went through menopause. So these are small amounts of estrogen to alleviate symptoms. Now, is it a, a myth, a misconception, or is it true that when it comes to cholesterol, even if you're living that healthy lifestyle that we were talking about, that hormone therapy will I increase your cholesterol level? You know, cholesterol is a big deal in midlife. A lot of women are told for the first time that their cholesterol is up and their triglycerides are up. And the last thing in the world they want to do is take a medication that might make it worse. So that is something that people worry about. But to a lot of women's surprise, what we understand is that hormone therapy in many cases can actually decrease cholesterol. But it does depend what kind of hormone therapy you're taking when you look at the impact on lipids. So as an example, oral hormone therapy, a pill taken by mouth, may decrease cholesterol, but it can also increase triglycerides. Transdermal estrogen, on the other hand, which is administered through the skin, not only can decrease cholesterol, but it is likely to decrease triglycerides. So it has, it's all good news. It has a good impact. You know, um, with my limited knowledge of, of menopause, I've heard that not only is the hot flashes, I guess, the hallmark of menopause, but also vaginal dryness and pain. Is that something that goes along with it automatically, or is that something that can be maybe hit or miss? Maybe you will experience it, maybe not. Well, first of all, your knowledge is not limited. The fact that you brought that up tells me that you know a lot more than even a lot of women know about menopause because they're not expecting that they might have vaginal dryness or pain. And in fact, 60% of women do experience vaginal dryness. But unlike hot flashes that very often start at the get-go, sometimes the dryness, the thinning of tissue, is not something that women experience until even a few years later. So they don't necessarily associate it with menopause. And women need to know that there are solutions. There are a number of prescription hormonal and non-hormonal options in order to alleviate the dryness and the pain. But there's also an over-the-counter hormone-free, long-acting moisturizer that any woman can just get at the drugstore. And in addition, and this is really important for the guys to know because they're the ones that can bring this when the time is right, that it's really mm -hmm. important to have a good silicone lubricant and use it at the time of intercourse to ease penetration and to decrease pain. It can be a game changer for a lot of couples. Now, earlier in our conversation, you mentioned a couple of websites, one of which where uh, women could go and read the uh, Women's Health Initiative report on their own, and another one as well. Could you give us uh, those websites once again? Absolutely. The website to read the report, the Women's Health Initiative report, is whi.org. And then the website to get a lot more information about menopause, hormonal, non-hormonal therapies, to find a menopause expert is the website for the North American Menopause Society, and that's menopause.org, menopause.org. And I highly, highly recommend that. And I do have a book, um, which is called Sex Rx, Hormones, Health, and Your Best Sex Ever, which also goes through the nitty gritty about what happens mm -hmm. at menopause and more important, what you can do to alleviate the symptoms. And where can our listeners get a copy of your book and uh, also head it over, over to your website? Absolutely. My website is drstriker.com. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us on the program today. It's been a pleasure, doctor. And thank you for talking about this too often taboo topic. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, listen in, and download at SoundCloud. And be sure and visit our affiliates page at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. Thank you for listening to Health Professional Radio. We're very proud to be an independent broadcaster providing our content free of charge to you, the listener. One of the ways that we're able to remain free and independent is by having people like you become patrons. You can support Health Professional Radio simply by visiting hpr.fm and clicking the button that says Become a Patron. Your patronage of even just $1 a month lets us know that you're there, which in turn makes us more valuable to advertisers. And, of course, if you're able to afford more, then we would certainly appreciate the support. My name is Toby Longhurst from Health Professional Radio. 
please visit hpr.fm, click the Become a Patron button, and support us if you can.